everybody! Thanks for tuning in. My name is Hyunmin Lee and I'm an animator at the Walt Disney Animation Studios. I've been at Disney since 2007 and my first film was The Princess and the Frog, but recently I got to be the animation supervisor for Anna on Frozen 2. So that was very exciting and I'm going to show you how to draw Anna today. Okay, so we're gonna get started. And so what we'll start with is a nice sheet of paper here. I'm going to use two pencils. I'm going to use a red pencil and a black pencil. This is just a normal graphite pencil. And the reason being that I like using the red pencil to just rough out some outlines and some guidelines. Stuff that will I'll draw really lightly just to help me know where to put certain parts of her face and her clothes and everything like that. And it's, it's always a, a helpful guide for you to have that. You don't always have to have it. It doesn't always have to be red. You can use any color that you like, as long as it's different from the black that you're using for your pencil. So we're going to start with the red. And for Anna, we're going to start with her head. And I'm going to start with a circle. And I'll draw it somewhere here. Her head is actually a bit like an egg shape, so to do the egg shape, I'm going to add a little to that circle and add a little bit of a pointier curve below that circle, so overall I get this egg shape outline here for her head. And for Anna, this time we're going to draw what we usually call a three-quarter view. And a three-quarter view, what that means is we're not looking exactly at the front of her face, and we're not looking exactly at the side of her face. We're kind of looking in the middle. She's going to be looking slightly towards the left side of the paper here. And so let's start with a center line. And because it's not flat on, it's not going to be a straight line, we'll draw it a slightly curved line. Like that, going from the top to the bottom, like that. And so you can see how this half is a little smaller than this half. And that's going to indicate how the three-quarter view makes this side. You, you'll see this side of her face a little more and this side a little less. So her eyes and everything on this side is going to be a little foreshortened, which means that we'll see a little bit less of it, so it'll be a little shorter, smaller. And so just to keep helping us with the guides, after this line, we're going to draw another line going horizontally, crossing that line somewhere around the middle. We can make it another nice curve like that. So this will indicate that we're looking a little bit down onto her head, so we're not looking at it front on. And so those are nice guidelines that we can have to start planning her head and her face and everything. And so we're going to start placing her eyes. And Anna has almond-shaped eyes, so if you've seen an almond, you know, they're kind of shaped like that. With little stripes on them, so it's basically that shape that we're going to draw on each side of this center line to see where her eyes are going to go. And we're going to use this line as a guideline. And so going to draw one almond shape over here and on the right side of that line another almond shape over here and those are where her eyes are going to go and as you can see this one's a little bit larger than this one and that's from the foreshortening that I talked about earlier and we're going to just lightly put a curve over those eye shapes to indicate where her eyebrows are going to go. And just to see where her nose is going to go, we're going to follow this line and 
go somewhere in between where these two lines meet and where that line ends and somewhere in that middle part I'll kind of draw a little flat oval there and that's kind of going to be where her her nose is going to be and then right under her nose we'll indicate a nice slight V shape to show her mouth where her mouth is going to go and later on I'll go into the details more but with Anna's eyes I tend to draw it less of just a simple curve but Instead of that, I'll draw it more like a V-shape like that. And that just kind of gives her smile just a little bit more of an accent. And I think it goes really well with Anna's really positive and fun personality. So to, after that, so we have the head shape, we have the eyes and the nose and the mouth. Just follow that horizontal line that you drew there and then we can indicate where her ears are gonna go very lightly and then from where her ears are we can start drawing where her neck will go just very lightly indicate where her shoulders will be <coughs> and so these lines that we're drawing with the red, they're really rough. They're meant to be rough and they're meant to be light. They don't have to be perfect or exact. You're going to go over them with the black pencil. So it can be that you correct it as you go and you can also erase it as you go too. So don't, don't worry too much about being perfect with these lines. So now that we have this basic roadmap for us in place, we're gonna go and start with the black pencil. And so we're going to start with the outline of her face and this big egg shape that we drew earlier is going to be a nice guideline for us. So right around where we drew that eyebrow, I'm going to start defining her forehead. And first I'm going to start following that egg shape guideline that we went through. Just around here, I'm actually going to draw the line, a little curve outside of the egg shape. And what that's going to do is give her a little bit more fleshy a, a cheek shape there. So just around there, right under where that horizontal line is, you can go outside the egg shape a little bit and then go back to that egg shape and then right where that cross line meets the bottom of the egg shape is going to be where her chin is and you can follow that line to finish her jaw line there so again there's the forehead there's her chin cheek and then her chin and there's her face outline and I'm not gonna draw the ears just yet we're gonna leave the ears till after we draw her hair because if you remember her her hair tends to cover up her ear a bit so we'll leave that till later now we're gonna draw her eyes and her eyes are a really important part and the eyes we always say for every character they're kind of like the window into their soul and since Anna has that feisty and energetic, positive with soul and spirit, then we want to make sure that shows through her eyes. And so we're going to follow this almond shape outline that we drew. And I'm going to start by drawing the upper lid line and the lower lid line first. And for the upper lid line, what I'm going to do is it's going to be a shape made by two lines. And the shape is going to start thin and get thicker like this. And then you can finish it with an eyelash. And what that's going to do is help you make, make it look like there's her eyelashes and how her eyelashes get longer towards the outer, her outer eye corner. So that will kind of 
make that graphic shape to indicate that. So, so from this top part of the almond shape, I'm not going to start right at the bottom. I'm going to start somewhere right here around the middle. So, draw nice two heart shapes like this. And from the inner side of her eye, it's going to get thicker towards the outside. And then you can finish with a nice little eyelash shape there. And I'll color in, in black to throw to show the thickness of her eyelashes. And for her bottom <clears throat> bottom lid line, I'm not gonna connect these lines all the way. I'm gonna leave a little gap for both sides. So start following that lower side of the almond shape. Leave that little gap there. And then for the bottom line, sometimes it's nice to give it a little bit of flatness towards the inner corner there. So we have one eye there. I'm going to do a similar thing to the eye on this side. And this eye is going to be a little wider because we're seeing more of it. So start from the middle there. Two lines forming that arch shape that gets thin to thick. Finish with a nice little eyelash shape. Color it in nice and dark with your pencil. Then same for the lower lid that we did on the other side. We're going to leave a gap. So leaving a gap from here, just go down like that, follow the almond shape, and then a little flatter line here towards the inner corner. And then right above the upper lid line, the lashes that we drew here, I'm going to draw a line just a little bit above them that goes a similar direction with them, and that's going to be her socket line. And so the next thing we're going to draw are her eyeballs. And if you look at your own eyes, you get that circle in the middle, and then you have another darker circle in the middle. And that's going to be your pupil and iris. And just to add to that for the drawing, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a little circle that indicates the light hitting the eye and make her, it's going to make her eye look like it's shining, a little more sparkly, get a little more sparkle that we have in Anna's personality in her eyes. So let's draw the eyeballs. We're going to draw the eyeballs a little bit towards the right side of her eye. And what that's going to do is gonna, it's going to make her look like she's looking at us. So let's start with this side. Then, because this side is foreshortened, the circle is going to be more like an oval. And then on this side, it's going to be more a full circle. And so inside those circles, we're going to start with the little circle to indicate the light hitting her eyes. And then it's going to be the circle inside, color it black. That's going to be her pupil there. And then same thing on this side, little circle for the light. And another circle for the pupil, color it nice and dark. And on top of that, we can shade in the rest of her eye just to make it show the color of her iris. And sometimes what you can do is make the top part underneath her eyelashes a little darker. 
and that's kind of like the shadow coming from her eyelashes and it'll make the eyes look like they're getting a little bit more light into them too so there we have her eyes and we're gonna draw her eyebrows her eyebrows are similar almost similar in the way we drew her upper eyelids but we're gonna do the opposite we're gonna start with an inner edge and we're gonna do two lines that create an arch like that and we're gonna start thick on the inner side and get thinner towards the outer side so here we're gonna start with the edge two lines like that so it goes from thick here to thin here same on the other side we have that inner edge And two nice arcs that connect at the end there where you have the thick going to the thin and you can slightly shade that in too her eyebrows are a little bit on the darker side and see we already have her eyes and her eyebrows so now we're gonna draw her nose and Anna has a really nice long nose bridge with a cute button nose at the end we're gonna very lightly indicate her nose bridge with a little curve and the curve is gonna be right on the left side of the center line here and so just it'll kind of imagine you can kind of imagine that it goes from this inner edge of that eyebrow if you imagine that connects just next to her Eye there you can draw that little curve and that's gonna be her nose bridge and for her nose we're gonna draw it a little simple kind of like an upside down triangle and that's gonna be where her nostrils will be and we're gonna put it right around that little circle we put where when we were doing the guidelines to place her nose and so just imagine that line connects you don't have to actually draw it and so that's kind of where we're going to start that little upside down triangle there's her nose and from this end give it a little line that you can imagine connecting there nice to not connect it because her nose bridge isn't very very pronounced it's a little lower but this will give you the indication of the edge of her nose and the little nice button nose that she has and so now we're gonna draw her mouth and we're gonna start with the upper lip and like I said before it's gonna be a nice little V shape and it's gonna be two parts there's this side and we're going to add a little volume to it and there's this side we're going to add a little volume to just the center of it too and then towards the edges you can give it a nice little curl like that that'll give her a nice little smile so let's start with one side of the v give it a little volume and then there's the other side of the v A little volume towards the center there and a nice little curl to give her a nice little smile and for her bottom lip we're just going to make it a simpler curve Anna doesn't have very thick lips but she has very expressive lips and mouth shapes And she definitely smiles a lot so we have a nice little smile for her and you can also shade it in what I also like to do sometimes with the lower lip is only shade it towards the outer edges and leave a little light patch in the middle there and what that does it makes it feel like her her lips are a little bit shinier 
and you get a little light hitting that lip there. And so, see, now we have her eyes and we have her nose and mouth and eyebrows. So we all like, almost have her whole face there. And now that we have those, we can add her freckles. She has very cute little freckles. So you can just put some dots right around her cheek, a little over her nose, right there. And so now, before we start drawing her hair and drawing her ears and everything, I'm going to go back to the red pencil for a while so that we can start planning out where her hair is going to go. And so Anna has these cute bangs that fall on her forehead. And if you imagine this is her face seen from this front, and that's the center line. It doesn't start from the center, it starts a little bit on this side. So you get another two almond-like shapes for her bangs there. So we're going to do the same here. It's going to be a little bit on the right side of that center line. And just for now, roughly, we're going to put a nice big almond shape there for one side of her bangs. And then another one on this side for the other side of the bangs. And then she also has the rest of her hair covering her head. So this oval is just her head part. So just to add the volume of her entire hair there, just draw a nice circle line around. And then we're going to indicate where her braids are going to go. Her braids kind of fall from the side of her head and go to drape over the top of her ears. And then they go around, wrap around to the back of her head. So it's going to be her hair and it's going to be her braids kind of wrapping around towards the back. We're going to get a little bit, see a little bit of the braids on this side too and for the rest of her hair she lets it down and you can just draw it going down like that or we can imagine maybe Gail is around not in that case we can give it a little bit more direction like it's blowing in the wind so let's give it a nice overall swoop this way and while I'm doing that, I might start indicating where her clothes are going to be. So that's where her neck's going to be. So we're going to put an indication of where her coat collar is. Her coat shoulder is going to fall somewhere above where the shoulder line is. And it's the other coat collar. It's the other coat shoulder. And the coat is open in the middle, so we have that open part. And then inside, we won't see a lot of it, but we have her dress. So there's her dress collar. She has a cool button here. And then underneath that coat that we won't see a lot, but she has a pretty square neckline there. So we can indicate that line of her neckline that we see between the open part of her her cloak and there's also these two pins on both sides of the open side of the cloak and the chain that connects them to keep the coat on so now we're done with the red pen and we're gonna go back to the black pencil red pencil that is so okay so let's go back to the hair so we drew these simple shapes for the hair, but we're going to make them a little more loose and just show how the hair is going to be parting and bunching up in parts. So we start with the parting there. We can draw one little wedge and a bigger one like that. And then finish off this big shape here. 
And because there's a little bit of wind, we're going to put a little wedge curve here, maybe another one here, just to feel like the wind is kicking up the bangs a little bit. And one thing that's nice to do when you're drawing hair is you can draw these big shapes, but within those big shapes, you can start drawing this these lines inside those shapes. And because hair is made of all these different strands, you don't have to draw all the different strands, but these lines will help make it feel like the strands of hair are being seen. And you can do a few fly, fly waves like that too. And we'll do the same thing for the bangs on this side, a little wedge here. Another wedge here, maybe some lines to give it a little bit of those hair strands. And then we're gonna start drawing the braids. We're not gonna see a lot of the braids, so we're gonna make them pretty simple looking. So with braids, sometimes when I'm doing simple braids, I make them links like this. So imagine we're gathering the hair from the side of her head. Gathers here, and then we're gonna create one link there. And then the other link is gonna start wrapping around towards the back. Start, add some of the strands there. Then we'll get a little bit of the braids on this side too. And then we can finish the top part of her hair. Adding the top rest of her hair there. You can add a few lines to show where the parting is. And now we can actually start drawing her ears. And her ears are gonna be like a reverse C shape. And usually you can draw a little line inside there to indicate just the little bit of the structure inside the ear. But what's happening right now is that her hair is covering the top part. So we're only going to see this part. And that's what we're going to draw. And we're going to start with a little wedge to show the hair in front of her ear. And here's the bottom of that reverse C. It's the bottom of her ear. A line for the inside of the ear. And might just see a tiny bit of her ear on this side. Sometimes we don't, but we just draw it in anyway. Okay, so we have the top part of her hair. We're going to leave the bottom part of her hair because right now the body and her clothes are all in front of the hair. So we're going to finish that part first. So let's start with the neck. And then draw the coat collar. And we're going to imagine it wrapping from the back of her neck, coming forward like this. That's the coat collar. It's the other side. It's the shoulder. And then the middle opening part of her cloak. There's her other shoulder. And then inside that, we're going to draw her dress collar. We won't see a lot of it. And then there's her button there. We have the nice Arendelle wheat pattern. that button and then we have this line here that's the part of her square neckline that we're seeing in between the open cloak we have the two pins and just draw a simple line to indicate the chain if you look very closely at the chain each chain link is actually 
that wheat shape too and they're all linked together and if you want to do that you can actually draw all of those too we're gonna skip that part because we don't have a ton of time right now but we will draw some of the line patterns that we have on her on her cloak and so we have one line that goes from her shoulder on that's that side on this side, it's probably going to be almost hidden, or it'll be kind of like that edge there. And there's another line going right in between these two spots. So we have the lines on both sides. For the lines too, actually, if they're, they're pinking lines, and if you look very closely, they're actually these little jagged pieces of black fabric that are showing and so you can go ahead and draw those in too but for now we're gonna just quickly shade in the collars you can give it a lighter shade for her coat a bit darker for her dress underneath there and so we have her clothes there and now we're going to draw the rest of her hair and so for the rest of her hair it's flowing a little freely with the wind so you can be a little freer with it just let your lines flow do the wedges the little wedges and the big wedges kind of like we did with the bangs here to show how the hairs kind of clumping together and then they part you can be a lot freer with it just like let your lines flow as you draw hair flying in the wind and also you can always add those lines inside the shapes just to show the strands in the direction that the hair is going and so while I'm at it since I have a red pencil already and on his red hair, I'll go in and shade her hair red just to give a little bit more color. And there we go, there we have Anna. So hopefully that was fun. I hope uh, you can practice a lot, have fun learning how to draw Anna. Definitely don't worry if you don't get it in the first try. This is this is a video, so you can always pause it and watch it again, stop it here and there. But always with drawing, drawing a lot and practicing a lot, that always makes everything better. So try to have fun with it. And thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time. Thank you!